Though I know I must be wary, still I venture someplace scary. Ghostly hauntings I turn loose. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice! Hey, this is Megan in the Restricted section. Um, it is getting close to Halloween, and I fucking love Halloween, and I love everything about it. Um, so today I thought I would do a video where I just talk about some of the creepy shit I have read so far this year. Um, so some of the creepiest scenes or creepiest characters in books that I have read thus far. Um, and I decided to do it dressed as Lydia from the Beetlejuice cartoon because I love costumes. And Halloween's a good excuse to wear a costume and not be thought of as a weirdo. So, here I am. One of the first things was I read, um... The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. I read that earlier this year. I've talked about this book quite a bit because I really liked it. I thought it was different and creepy and I really like different and fucking weird and I really enjoyed it. There are 12 um, students in this book and they study from one man who one man who they call father and each one of them studies a different catalog of knowledge. So like one of them studies a catalog of war and one studies a catalog of languages and nature and all this stuff. So um, there's a character in this book, her name is Margaret, and she studies a catalog of death. And in order to do so, she has to die and spend time in the Shadowlands. And so um, early-ish on in the book, here's a little part that talks about Margaret and what she does. So it said, for a year or so, Father had been murdering Margaret two or three times a week. He did this in various ways. The first time, he snuck up behind her with an axe at dinner, startling everyone, not least Margaret herself. After that, it was gunshots, poisons, hanging, whatever. Sometimes it was a surprise, sometimes not. Another time, Father pierced her heart with a stiletto, but only after telling her what he would do, setting the knife before her on a silver tray and letting her contemplate it for three full days and nights. Carolyn would have supposed that the axe would be worse of the two, but Margaret seemed to take that one in stride. After a day or so of looking at the knife, though, she started to do that giggle of hers, and after that, she never really stopped. Carolyn sighed. Poor Margaret. Um, and then Margaret dies a lot in the book and comes back, and as she gets older, she gets increasingly more more dead, even when she's alive. So, like, she smells like rotting meat, and she has maggots in her hair. Um, and she's just weird, and she has a creepy giggle that she does all the time. So, that creeped me out. And then, ultimately, um, one of the ways that Margaret chooses to die is really fucking gruesome. She gets, like, roasted alive. So, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty fucking creepy. Anyway. I read the Southern Reach trilogy earlier this year, and that series was kind of reminiscent of, like, H.P. Lovecraft-ish type stuff. Um, and so they travel to this, like, this area, geographical area, where weird shit happens and people keep disappearing. The, these expeditions they send there keep disappearing. So there's this tower that they are curious about, that they seek to investigate. And there's a point at which, I can't remember what book it's in, I think, I believe it's in the first book, but I could be wrong, it's been a minute, where one of the characters realizes that the tower is breathing, like the, the walls are moving like a creature is breathing, and it's like they first, everyone else sees it as like a stone tower or whatever, and this person is able to see it maybe for what it really is. She begins to realize that this tower is a living creature, and it's breathing, and the deeper you walk into it, it's like the deeper you go, like the closer you get to the living part of the creature, and it gets like slimy. So up to this point, like I feel like a steady sense of dread had been building through like, um... I don't know, it's kind of vague and creepy, and you don't ever really get all the answers that you want, and you're always kind of questioning, like, what is reality? Is the narrator reliable? Um, what's happening? And so once it gets to the point where the character has a realization that, oh shit, this, like, tower tunnel is alive, then I think that just kind of, it all comes to a head right there. So it just makes, it adds to the creepiness. Um... 
but yeah, that whole, like, trilogy just made me uncomfortable because of, like, the sense of dread that it was invoking the whole time. Um, so I read Let Me In by John, I can never say his name. It's a, it's, I don't know, I'm terrible with it. Um, by John Advide Lundquist. I can't say that name. Um, anyway, so that is a story about a little girl who's a vampire who befriends a little boy who is not. Um, and she has with her her traveling companion. Um, it's like her vampire beard because he acts like her dad. And so it makes it less weird for her to be around, I guess. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so he is a pedophile, which is why he's drawn to her. She's perpetually a child, even though she's you know, hundreds of years old. And so she kind of uses that attraction to her advantage and makes him do her bidding. So that, spoiler alert, um, kind of leads to his undoing. He ends up getting caught in a really precarious situation. He throws acid on himself, intending to die. He does not. It just melts his face. Um, and then he's hospitalized, and she comes to see him and bites him. And... I think with the intention of she was going to, like, drink his blood and kill him, but she got interrupted and had to run away. And so he gets turned into, like, he's not really, I guess he was a vampire, but he was more like a weird, like, vampire, zombie monster, pedophile, creepy thing. I don't know what he was. Um, but he goes on a rampage looking for this little girl and ends up... He goes into this basement of the apartment buildings where they lived, trying to find her. She escapes, but one of the other kids from the area is down there in like this room that he and his friends hang out in, and he ends up getting trapped in there with the like creepy pedophile vampire zombie monster. And it's dark and he can't see, and the whole scene is like horrifying. And it ends with the kid. Um, just repeatedly smashing this thing's face in with a trophy and never really killing it because he'll hit it and then he'll wait and it like starts to move again so we hit it again and he just hits it and hits it and hits it for like hours until someone finds him and they find him like singing to himself as he's doing this and he's obviously like in shock and traumatized but that whole scene is just super super creepy and horrifying and gross and weird that book is weird. It's a good book, but it's a weird book. I got sucked into the Cemetery Forgotten Book series and just Carlos Ruiz Zafon in general here lately. Um, so the next few are going to be things, you know, from books that he's written. He writes very, like, dark, um, his books are kind of like a dark, creepy labyrinth. They're very, like, gothic feeling. And I really enjoy them. So there's a lot of cool, like, dark, creepy moments in the in those books. So they kind of lend themselves well to Halloween reading. But um, not in the Cemetery of Forgotten Books series is uh, The Prince of Mist. This was a different novel. I think it's like a young adult or middle grade novel that he wrote. Um, and that is about a family who moves to a small, like, coastal town. It's a watchmaker and his family. And the watchmaker's son, Max, discovers some creepiness afoot. And there's this garden of statues that are all situated around a six-pointed star. And they're statues of circus performers. And there's one in particular that really creeps him out, and it's a clown. It's this character called the Prince of Mist, and he's kind of like the... Kind of like a devil figure, I guess. And you, you can make a deal with him, and he'll give you what you want, but you owe him. And you have to... Um, do either do something for him or you're just his and so he's he's kind of um, re-emerging in this town because it's kind of he's been dormant for a while so he's re-emerging and creepy things are starting to happen again and so this family moves into this house where there's a horrible tragedy there's a family who lived there whose son passed away and then they the parents left and so this the family moves into this house and one of the children, a little girl, it has a bedroom with this big old wardrobe in it. And there's a scene that is really creepy, and it surprised me how creepy it was for being like a young adult or middle grade novel, um, where the Prince of Mist emerges from the wardrobe 
Um, like she hears a noise in there and the key is in, that's in the lock starts to turn and the doors come open and at first she just sees her cat and so she's like, oh whatever, okay, the cat was just fucking around in there, no big deal. But then like the Prince of Mists, you can see his smile and he like emerges from the cabinet and tries to snatch her up. So super creepy. I'm not doing it justice. I'm just rambling. Um, but really, really creepy scene and I definitely checked the closet a couple times before I went to bed that night just to make sure I don't want to get snatched up. So the next one that I'm going to mention from one of Carlos Ruiz Zafon's books is there's a scene in The Shadow of the Wind where I don't want to give too much away because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't read it so I'm going to try to be as vague as I can be with it and still be able to describe it to you but um, basically there's a tragic romance, a couple, well, yeah, there's, I guess, one tragic romance involved in the novel, and there's this, like, creepy ruined mansion, and there's a man who lives there who has been burned, and his face is, his lips are kind of burned off, and his face is, um, disfigured, and there's two characters who are in the, in this mansion, and they're having, they're having an intimate moment, and they hear something, and so they go to investigate the noise and find this burned man in the basement and it's a tomb. There's a tomb down there where there's a woman and an in infant buried in the basement of this house. And that scene is just really, it's really well written. The way that it's written, it just kind of like, it's really ominous and you, kind, you know kind of what's going to happen but you do, really don't want it to happen. But he totally went there. Um, and I think what makes it creepier, too, is... I don't want to ruin the story, but the story kind of makes it even more creepy and tragic and dark. Um, because the disfigured man, the woman and the child, are his family, and that those are the people he loved. And so he just kind of is haunting their, their tomb. Um, and then in the second novel of that series of The Cemetery of Forgotten Books... There's a character that skeeved me the fuck out the entire time. Um, he goes, he's called the boss by the main character. Um, oh, he has a name. What is his name? Oh, it's like Andreas Corelli. Is, and just the way that he is described, he um, has a very sinister smile, kind of a caddy the canary smile. He never blinks, and he really loves sugar cubes that's kind of pointed out that he just he eats sugar cubes and he is simultaneously like friendly and sinister at the same time so he speaks to the main characters that they're old friends but there's always kind of a hint of foreboding in their conversations and then toward the end of the novel you're kind of left questioning the narrator's sanity um, in regards to the boss and does he exist is he a real guy who knows? And there's a scene where the main character confronts the boss and he goes into this darkened room and he sees the boss's silhouette sitting in this chair and he can see his eyes shining or whatever and so he pulls out his pistol and he shoots him and he can see like the smoking wound and then as he draws closer and he can see his hand like fall off the arm of the chair and then as he draws closer it's not the boss at all it's a puppet that looks like the boss and then he goes down into the basement and finds even more puppets and one of them has his own face, the main character's own face on it. So that was a really creepy addition to that story too. But yeah, the character of Andreas Corelli or the boss was just really creepy and I think that he was described because he was very like gentlemanly and cordial but he was also, um, I could really read this, the air of like, the threatening air, and that he was a really sinister guy, even though, I mean, he was very refined and cordial. So it was a weird mix, and it kind of, it was unsettling. Um, those are some of the creepiest, scariest, or weirdest things I have read in books so far. I figured around Halloween would be a good time to talk about them. That's it for me today. I... Hope you liked this video. Um, it was something a little bit different and I was just really excited about Halloween. So, as per usual, there will be some links down below where you can find Sue and I elsewhere on social media if you desire. 
If you're not already subscribed to the restricted section, you should hit the subscribe button and check us out. Um, and so that's going to be it for me today. See you next time.